The original 13 Joes released in 1982 all brought something to the team. Grunt, Rock and Roll, Short Fuse, Breaker, Flash, Zap, Hawk, Clutch, Steeler, and Grand Slam all brought military realism and discipline. Scarlet brought the class and elegance. Snake Eyes brought the mystique and deadliness. And Stalker brought the coolness. And it's also important to note that of all the original 13 G.I. Joes, Stalker was the only one with a mustache. Looking at classified G.I. Joe Stalker today. If you're in Canada, check your GameStop. If you're outside of Canada and can't track them down, Big Bad Toy Store will ship overseas. And if the original scale is more your speed, they've still got Retro Stalker in stock, as well as an O-Ring reissue that comes packed with the Bumblebee Awestriker. Got the links for you in the show notes. Before we crack the box open, here's a look at the art. It's not Hector Garrido, that's for sure. On its own, it's nice, but it's just not the style that I'd expect to see on a G.I. Joe classified box. And the figure comes with not an overwhelming number of accessories, but the ones he comes with are really cool and have some cool features. And before we get into what this is, I want to just take a moment and talk about who this is by reading the original Larry Hama file card from the 1982 Stalker figure. Ranger, codename Stalker, file name Wilkinson Lonzo R. Primary military specialty Infantry, secondary military specialty Medic, Interpreter. Birthplace, Detroit, Michigan, grade E5. Stalker was a warlord of a large urban street gang prior to enlistment. Fluent in Spanish, Arabic, French, and Swahili. Graduated top of class basic combat training. Advanced infantry training, top of class. Special training, U.S. Army Language School. Intelligence School, qualified expert, M14, M16, M1911A1, auto pistol. M3A1 grease gun, M32 pulverizer submachine gun. And the quote reads, Functions well under high stress situations. Intelligent, perceptive, moves like some sort of jungle cat. Silent, fast, strong. First accessory we have to look at is the beret, which comes with a gold patch on it. And before we put it on, here's a look at the face sculpt, which is based on Charles Robinson, who played Mac on Night Court. Maybe. And not coincidentally, Mac was also a Vietnam vet. We wallowed in mud together, ate cold beans together. He's got a scar on the side of his head, which seems unlikely. Stalker's the kind of guy to dodge bullets and blades, but that seems to be the style these days. The beret fits perfectly, not too snug, not too loose. And now he looks more like Stalker and less like Mac from Night Court. Oh yeah, yeah, I bet that chokes you up, huh? <laughs> First weapon we'll look at is his blade. And it's fairly easy to fit it in his hand. Even easier if you heated it up with a hairdryer, but I prefer to just futz around straight out of the box. And it fits perfectly in the sheath on the side of his leg. He also comes with a handgun which has a removable suppressor on it. Let's get it in his hand before we add the silencer on. Same deal as the knife, with just a little bit of blunt force, you can get it in there without heating it up. And the trigger finger fits right through the loop quite nicely. Unfortunately, he doesn't have enough range to double hand the pistol. But if you get the blade in the other hand, he does a beautiful Metal Gear Solid Big Boss CQC pose. And here's the suppressor, which plugs into the barrel. And I would recommend ordering some stands for these guys. I'm just using a Transformers SCF stand at the moment, but I've ordered a whole bunch of cheap classified stands from eBay. And you can store the pistol and its suppressor in the holster on the side of his leg. The suppressor fits in this loop. And the handgun fits in the holster nicely too. Perfect tolerance, not too tight, not too loose. Secure enough that it won't fall out. Up next is the M32 Pulverizer with removable magazine. 
And this one is a little on the tight side, getting it to fit in there. All I gotta do is slap it in. This is the same gun that he came with in 82, and because it's not a real gun, they were able to include it with this figure. They seem to be shying away from including real guns with the classified figures. Fits in his hand perfectly, finger through the loop again. And the stock on it isn't too long that it gets in the way as you're trying to pose it. Great elbow range and wrist range also helps with holding the gun in many different positions. And even though it's probably not proper gun etiquette, this is something I've always done with the original Stalker figure, so it's really cool to be able to do it with the 6-inch classified version. Have the other hand steadying the gun by holding the magazine. And a quick side-by-side -side of the original Pulverizer with the classified one. It is really, really close. Quite a few of the original details have been carried over. With all the nerf looking guns that have been included with some of these figures over the past few years, it's really refreshing to see a gun that actually looks like a real gun included. And again, I'm not a gun guy, I don't know if this would actually work in real life, but if I was a kid, I would be plugging this suppressor on the barrel here. The pulverizer would be enough for me, but he also includes this machine gun. So in order to use that, you can store the pulverizer on his back with this holster right here. And this one plugs right into his back, thankfully. Which is a better idea than the one they gave with Flint that goes down on the middle of his back. In order to store it, you need to take the magazine out. And it just slides right in. Once again, perfect tolerance. Not too tight, not too loose. The magazine, on the other hand, is a really tight fit on the side here. You have to give it quite a bit of force in order to fit it in there. So much force, in fact, that you get a little bit of stress marks on the inside there. And it looks pretty cool on his back. You can also tilt it to the side a little bit. And the machine gun, which comes with this little ammo piece that plugs into it, which actually plugs in only one way. You can see it's not a perfect rectangle, it's angled on one side. You could probably force it going any other way, but this is the way it's supposed to fit in. Assuming your stalker figure is right-handed, which means the bullets would load in close to him and the casings would eject away from him. Plugs in nice and snug, and this is a really cool detail here, the bullets feeding into the side of the gun. I'm not sure what gun this is supposed to be based on, but to me it kind of looks like a miniaturized M60. And you can use his other hand to steady it. I'm usually not that interested in the secondary weapons that these guys come with, but this gun is really cool. I'm tempted to just keep the pulverizer stored and use this as the figure's primary gun. Maybe in a while just to change things up a bit from the pulverizer. And that's what's nice about these figures, being able to freshen them up a little bit with alternate accessories and poses. And a 360 of this stalker swag. Speaking of options, he also includes the scarf, which I'm not really interested in at the moment, but I'm going to pop it on so you can see what he looks like with it on. And it just plops on. Doesn't sit all that flush, and they've tried to remedy that a little bit by putting this little hole here for this grenade or smoke bomb, whatever it is, to rest underneath it. Pop the head back on, and there's an alternate look for Stalker if you want it. I'm enjoying the authentic 82 look of him so much that I don't really want to change him up that drastically from it, but it's an option for down the road, or you can just use it on another figure if you want. And a side-by-side -side with the original 1983 Swivel Arm Stalker, which is pretty much the same as the 82 Stalker. The classified figure has more realistic looking boots. He's also got a more subdued color scheme. The original Stalker, despite having a camouflage pattern, was one of the brighter colored original G.I. Joes. Whereas this classified Stalker looks more like the original Olive Drab Joes, like Hawk or Rock and Roll or Breaker. Gotta have the Y harness on the back. And the classified Stalker has more stuff on the sides, the knife sheath on one leg. and the pistol holster and suppressor on the other leg.
And here he is leading the way with another Ranger, Beachhead. And compared to Stalker, Beachhead is quite bright colored. Isn't really going to blend in the jungle like Stalker. And Beachhead's gun also makes me really appreciate Stalker's gun. Glad we're moving away from those old nerf looking rifles. And for the people who absolutely loathe the red beret that Beachhead came with, here he is with Stalker's beret. It's really loose and it's also literally a hat on a hat. And alongside some of the other OG-13, it's really exciting to see the original G.I. Joe team coming out a little at a time in the classified line. Snake Eyes and Breaker with the Ram Cycle and Stalker's greens are basically exactly the same as Breaker, so if they just stick with that for the guys like Zap, Short Fuse, Hawk, Clutch, then you're gonna have a really cohesive looking original G.I. Joe team with just Snake Eyes and Scarlet who will be standing out. And he looks absolutely perfect on the Ram Cycle, ready to take care of some Cobra business. One of the best classified figures yet, and another great example of less is more. This is a big reason why I was such a G.I. Joe fan in the first place in 1982, and in a six inch line like classified, which could really go over the top with details and accessories, it's refreshing to see this character just be cool, like the original Stalker was, and not try so hard. Thanks for watching, till next time. Nerd Mistake.